Professor, it's great to have you with us tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you. So Thank President you. Xi's called reform China's second revolution. What mm -hmm. do you think he means by that? Well, we actually said reform and open door as the second revolution. I think what he meant by that is, um, it is a really a extension of what Deng Xiaoping said at the beginning of the uh, open door policy time during the 1980s. Uh, and, and, and by extending that to open door policy, I think he is very clear about uh, continuing this path of opening China, integrating China into the world economy. Um, as we know, when we talk about the first revolution, uh, we're talking about CPC taking over China in 1949. And this is the, uh, he's elevating the open door policy to the same level as reform as being the second revolution. It really means that you know, China is part of the world economy. China is going to continue to move towards a market economy, very important market economy, although with Chinese characteristics, Chinese characteristics. Um, and you know, this is going to be something for the long term. It's not something temporary. It's going to be here and continue this process. There's a lot of doubt about whether China's model is going to you know, move back or, or, or move in another direction, but I think this is an unswerving answer to this question. And there's also doubt whether they're actually serious about these reforms, because there's been concern that promises have been made in the past but right. weren't fulfilled. What mm -hmm. do you think is different this time? Well, I think um, the what, it, it, this gets down to sort of a technical issues here. Um, you know, whether, I think, you know, probably you're referring to the, you know, U.S.-China trade dispute, uh, you know, over, uh, you know, alleged promises being broken in the past. Um, I think you know we have to look at the historic context how China has been, you know, moving away from uh, uh, this legacy of a planned economy, several Soviet-style planned economy before 1980s up to the current stage. It has been a, you know, a, a great achievement so far. You know, not many economies being as that successful as China transition from a Soviet-style economy to a market, you know, sort of a market economy mm -hmm. with China's characteristics without imposing a sort of a significant impact, a, a, a cost on average people's life. And that's a great achievement. It's an astounding change. And one of the changes yeah. that China is focusing on, on right now mm -hmm. is the State Intellectual Property Office. So mm -hmm. what do you think will actually develop there? Yeah, this is a, another very significant event. And I'm you know, really surprised actually he made this commitment this time because um, the uh, State Intellectual Property Office uh, restructuring wasn't part of the big government restructuring during the two sessions, announced the two sessions. This is something new, okay? And I think, uh, my guess is, uh, actually my um, forecast is that he is gonna transition this uh, office from just a place to filing patents and trademarks into something sort of a quasi law enforcement agency, very much like China's you know, Environment Protection Agency. It has teeth, it has, um, it has teeth in law enforcement not just a place to fight patents, but enforcing the intellectual property rights. China is increasingly moving away from sort of a licensor, licensee position to a licensor position. More companies uh, in China, corporate China, is becoming a uh, patent license source. So I think in, in, uh, during that transition, uh, it's, it's no doubt in my mind that the government is going to strengthen intellectual property protection and you know, move more towards a stringent enforcement of the law here.